Joining me in our Washington studio is Negar Mortazavi. She's an Iranian-American journalist focusing on U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East. So, Negar, first of all, welcome to our program. Thank you. Uh, when you listen to Trump this afternoon, he accused Iran of committing, and I'm quoting here, multiple violations of the agreement. Is there new evidence that has surfaced that shows Iran is in violation of this deal? It doesn't seem like it. The U.S. administration has not provided any evidence. The IAEA, the um, international watchdog for nuclear energy, has m repeatedly affirmed that Iran has abided by the agreement. And even last night, Secretary of State Tillerson and Secretary of Defense, um, I'm sorry, and the National Security Advisor McMaster in a press call reaffirmed that Iran has not violated the technical terms of the JCPOA, but at the same time, the administration is going to go ahead and decertify um, this report that the White House would be sending to Congress, which is uh, the, the sort of contradictory point of this strategy, but it is what's going to so happen. So when you refuse to certify this agreement, which Trump did, does that pave the way? Is the U.S. one step closer to actually pulling out of this agreement. Basically, what is next? Um, yes, it is. Well, let's not forget that the INARA, the U.S. domestic law, which requires this um, certification every 90 days of the U.S. president, is not exactly part of the JCPOA, but this could very well be the beginning of the unraveling or the U.S. stepping out of the JCPOA because it puts the ball in the court of the U.S. Congress, and then they will have 60 days to decide whether they would want to uh, reimpose nuclear sanctions back on Iran, and that would be a clear violation of the JCPOA on the U.S. side. There are a number of business deals at stake here. Boeing signed a $17 billion commercial aircraft deal with Iran. What's going to happen to these deals? Well, nobody knows yet because un until both parties or all parties still, in, st still stay in the JCPOA and the nuclear-related sanctions are not reimposed by the U.S. Congress, Boeing can still go ahead as far as the deal with Iran. But again, the fate of these kind of business deals, especially with American companies, is going to be in the hands of Congress after President Trump decertifies. And um, the, the Congress will have basically the responsibility of making the final decision of the fate of the United States when it comes to this international agreement. And let me ask you a question. We asked our reporter in, in Iran, reaction among Iranians. You are very much plugged in with the mood in Iran. How is this going to be received? And is it accurate to say this could actually embolden the hardliners in Iran? Definitely. You, if you listen to President Rouhani, his response to President Trump, it could very well be crossing over to the hardline territory of Iranian political system. He's a moderate. He's been reelected for the second term by the majority of the young population of Iran who want change, who want re-engagement with the world. But he says, he specifically told President Trump that you cannot divide the people and the government of Iran, and we will stand united against the enemies. So if the United States or if the West tries to become or portray itself as the enemy of Iran, that would ultimately make the moderates reunite behind the hardliners and basically embolden the most hardline militaristic parts of the Iranian political structure. And I think there is a big concern about that. Negar Mortazavi, thank you so much.